Okay, so this project is going to be 84C20 dash. This puppy's in good shape, it's just dirty. Um, and faded, but nothing's really broken off. The pieces are all here. It's pretty good. I think what I'm gonna do is clean it up real good, see what it looks like. And then I'm probably going to use this Eastwood plastic resurfacer because it works great. I've done what this is in the picture. I've had pieces that are that, that look just like that when you're done and you cannot tell that they didn't come from the factory that way. This really works good. I don't know if it's got an acid base that helps it etch into the plastic, but it does not scratch off, flake off. It like melts into the plastic. So we'll do that. And then I've got these, uh, chrome paint pens that really look like chrome I may or may not I probably will redo all those I bought them so that I can re-letter stuff like that and vehicles um, shouldn't be too hard to do this one so we'll clean it up good and see what happens but first things first we'll clean this and then uh, see what it looks like probably get a couple of coats of this on and I'll come back and show you what that looks like. Okay, just a quick wipe down really showed its true ugly color. She's really faded. All I use is a little AcroClean PPG, just a wax and grease remover. Helps clean it up. Some glue marks there where they glued the face of the, the old radio in. I still have that radio, I'll probably still use it. Find the speakers at work, powers up, so hopefully it makes sound. But now we're gonna throw a little paint on there. I'll throw that plastic restorer on there and see what happens. There we go, two coats. Fresh, like brand new. Stuff lays out really easy. The first coat's a really good cover. Went ahead and got inside everything. I used the last of it too, damn it. <laughs> I like this stuff. For a lot of projects. It's like brand new. Nice coverage. I don't know if I'm gonna chrome those in or not. We'll see. Probably will. Still drying. Um, I got enough to do like a fog coat. Just to kind of make everything real even. We're starting to sputter a little on me at the end, but a thousand times better than what I had. Now I gotta clean up the gauge cluster. So when this goes back on, it looks all fresh and new. Alright. Now here it is all dried up. It turned up pretty good. It's a little more of a matte finish, not as shiny. It looks real good. And I don't think I'm gonna, I was watching a few videos and a few of these didn't have the chrome rings. And I kinda like the way that looks. It just looks fresh. But I did chrome the lights. So you can see that at least. But I like the way that looks clean. I think I'm gonna leave it. I did paint the chrome on that. It looks a little fresher. I still got to paint this. Got to tape it off. Can't find my thin line paint. It's around here somewhere in this garbage. But that'll look better. It was all chipped and missing half the letters. So it's already an improvement. Getting there, guys. Now what we're doing today. A little fiddly stuff that makes things nicer. Got this looking good. No busted, no cracked holes or nothing like that. But it's got this ugly deal they hacked out and put a switch in and the switch didn't fit the hole and it sat crooked and didn't know what the switch was for and then I found out what the switch was for and it's it's for turning on the radio while the keys are out of the ignition so it gives straight power to the radio again work truck two guys in the truck guy needs the keys to open the utility bed other guy wants to sit in the truck and wait and wants the radio on they wired in a power switch well they, they hacked it in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in, which will cover up those top two holes. 
it'll cover up the big thing they did I have to trim out this part and this part and I'm gonna put in two switches one for the radio which actually says stereo and because we're in modern times and that hole's so big I needed a bigger plate I'm gonna put it in a USB plug fast charger you can put up to two USB everybody with their phones nowadays in USB so it'll be on the right will be the charging on the left will be the stereo they light up blue to match the interior and instead of spending 250 bucks on a new one of these that doesn't have the hole <laughs> I'm gonna make the hole work for me only thing is there's gonna be two little screw holes down here that I may or may not be able to plug I think I might have some plastic rod that size so Sorry. there we go not done yet I still gotta figure out something to do with those and that looks way better than a big gaping hole and then those will light up blue and that'll turn the stereo on and that'll let you charge light up blue and let you charge your phone that'll work better than a gaping hole the piece looks good painted up nice this gets covered up by the faceplate. Somebody glued it to the faceplate, didn't rattle, but the faceplate covers that up on the radio, and I'm just leaving it. It's a Krako. Old school Krako. We're leaving it. Krako, Krako. Yen now. Unless I can find a two poster that's not 300 and some dollars with Bluetooth like all those freaking things are. That'll do for now. All right, guys. Got this out. Didn't take a video of it coming out because, well, it's uh, nothing really. The whole dash is already taken apart. Easiest way to do it is to take your dash pad out first. And we all know there's a million videos out there on how to take your dash pad out. Um, that's simple. Once that's out, there's just several screws. You take the plastic bezel off first. So you take the screws that hold the plastic on. Because if you have a vehicle with a speedometer cable, you can't take the whole gauge cluster out. The speedometer cable don't move enough. So you take... And this is what we're going to be polishing. All scratched and nasty. We're going to clean that up. That comes out. Then this comes out. But this part here is tucked behind the indicator switch for the switch. So you got to kind of pry a little bit to get that up. And then it'll come out. And then that whole piece comes out. It's plastic or thin metal depending on what your truck you got. Then you take the Speedo out. Just two screws holding that in and a couple of plastic posts. You pull that forward just enough so you can get your hands back there. And it's easier for me to show you this now. There is this clip, this spring clip, that holds the Speedo to the Speedo cable. And you just reach down and pull that forward, and it's a quick release that pops that right out of the Speedo cable, and then this comes right out. Once that's out, you can pull this by taking the rest of the screws out, there's five, four screws, one there, one there, one there, and one there. And then this whole thing leans forward, and you have a plug on the back that sits in here, and it's got two pinch clips. Mine was real hard to get out because it's really hardened up from the heat down here. And once you got those in, that just pops out, and this whole thing comes out. The only reason I took this whole thing out is because... Um, oh, I thought my camera turned off, sorry. A couple of the bulbs are out. Um, I have two, at least two bulbs out, and the rest of these are really flickering and dim. So I need to get to the back so I can pull them out there, there, and there. And I'm going to inspect this circuit board, make sure it's all in good shape. Clean everything up really good. Go back and clean the gauges up really good. I got paint to paint the needles. I barely touched this. I mean, ever so slightly, and it crumbled. So I'm going to have to try to find one of those. Hopefully, LMC's got one of those. Um, I'm going to take this out. I know these work, but this doesn't work. I cannot find the temp sender on the motor, and I can't find the wiring that comes to the gauge. Everything else works, and there doesn't look like there's anything 
well, of course there's something missing. I can't find it, but I'm going to take this out and clean the terminals. Just in case they got that sucker hidden somewhere where I can't find it and it actually is working, maybe it's just the terminals. I got it apart. I'm going to clean it up, clean the contacts, because these just, if you can see in there, these just have little pins that slide into little plastic spring or metal spring clips, and that's your connection to make the electric gauges work. So they just pop out. Clean them up. I'm going to put a little dielectric grease on them. Squeeze them up. Put them back in. Tighten them down. And I'll clean them good. Don't use anything cleaner wise. I might try and I'll let you guys know. Um, some Windex. Mild window cleaner on a rag. I'm going to start with just plain water first. This paint that is on here is very. I've done it on an old another vehicle and it's just smudged. And I, and I didn't even use anything. Um, I used a little rubbing alcohol to get a stain off, and I bumped the white, and the white came off. So I'm going to be real careful and use water and get these just all clean, get these clean, get this all clean. I got needle paint. I'm going to repaint those. Hopefully when I touch those, they don't snap because that suck having to buy all new gauges. I'm going to paint those orange again, get everything clean, and then uh, I'll come back, show you that, get this all cleaned up, and then I'll show you... I'll set up I got a little tripod that maybe while I'm doing this you can have a video of me uh, using mother's headlight restore kit is what I use on these because they come with a nice little foam ball and plastic polish and I'll clean this up with window cleaner and get it just spick and span so nothing scratches it and then I'll go back and polish both sides starting with this side to see what it looks like but usually the backside's got a little bit of a film on it from heat and age, and it, it can benefit from a little buffing. So we'll buff these back out, and then hopefully this will all just look really nice and new, um, shining through our newly painted bezel. And then we'll have our newly covered dash pad, too, because that's got to get covered. But that'll be next. All right, guys. I'll be back. There's that dash piece. That's pretty good. Yeah. That will look pretty good in there. Everything's coming along freshly. Painted the needles last night. Might have to do one more coat, but the needles are cleaned up and painted. The gauges are cleaned up. Just gotta polish, clean that, polish them. That'll be next. All right, because I'm a little angle retentive and this is a part already, so the little rivets that hold the gauges in were rusty. <laughs> I just stuck a little black paint on that and the screws there were all rusty. And those are rusty. No, they're not. So, just the little details that nobody will ever notice, but that's the point. If you don't notice, it means it's hidden well and looks good. And your impression is it's a nice vehicle. That everything's fresh and new and maintained. I like looking at nice stuff. Let's get in there. All right, let's see if we can capture this with a, without making too much of a problem. So this is what I use. Mother's new lens headlight restorer. It's got a bunch of attachments in it. I'm going to go right to the final polish ball, which will go right in my drill. And we'll start there. That's the softest final deal. And then we got this. Comes with tons of this. You could do six cars with this stuff. I use it on a lot of stuff, I use it on these all the time. Once in a while, you might have a scratch in there. You need to get out, and there's sanding pads. And then an attachment for that, different sanding pads and whatnot. But I don't think this one's bad enough to do any of that. So we will just put that in our drill. Shake that up good. Start with that lens first. 
just because. Oh. I use this one in a while. It's plugged. Start on that side first. So you can see I cleaned this all up and you can see the scratches in there and you can see that it's dull and I'm only going to do the gauge faces, the lenses where the gauge faces go. Some people want to polish the whole thing and make it new. This is old. I mean, this is 30 something years old. What is it? It's 38 years old. It's brittle. You're putting heat into it by doing this. Minimize your heat just where you need to polish. By polishing everything else, you catch an edge, you could crack or break this, and then you're buying a new one. Like that. Sometimes, just like sanding, you want to make cross hatching. Polishing is no different. If you polish in the same direction over and over, nothing happens. If you change your direction, you cross hatch it, you'll polish crosswise, and that'll bring you a little better polish. So, let me get that off in there. Just uh, all we did was the fronts. A lot of times you don't have to do the back if they clean up good with Windex because they don't get scratched on the back. It's a lot. I don't know if I have camera picking that up or not. But big improvement. all the way around from that plastic black plastic piece riding on there over the years etched in there more than likely you're not going to see that when you put it on I still like to get it out because then I know I've polished down through I'm done my job Launch you on the head. Yeah, that one's a little worse than the other ones as far as that line etched in there, but it's coming. It's a little patience, folks. A little patience. Creep up on it. None of this stuff when you're polishing old plastic. is to be in a hurry with. Well, look at that. The battery on my tripod went dead and made you go crooked. <laughs> yeah. Still got a little line right there. I'm gonna come back to that. Let it cool off. Don't just sit there and hammer and hammer and hammer and hope it goes away. Because you do that sometimes you get too much heat in it, it causes other problems. I'm gonna smear that around. Woo! 
Careful. Always want to buff away so you don't catch that edge. I thought I was. I thought I had it in the other direction. It ain't perfect, folks. Easy if I could set this down, but then that shakes the camera, so I'm trying not to. This end piece. Edge right there. Probably have to sand that. I can feel it with my nail. That's damn near perfect. Speedo side. Those two are, I think, be done with those. I'm going to sand that. And I'm going to sand a little there and a little there. This is the softest sandpaper they got. It's like 3000, it's on a foam disc. This one's almost wore out, but it's perfect just to test with because you know you'll be able to polish this back out. And this can go on a little adapter, a little sprinkle of water. And then it goes in the drill. But I'd rather, because this is so delicate, and that piece is almost gone. I'm not going to go completely hog wild on this. Because The search for perfection is only going to be seen by me, not by the person looking to buy it. They'll be impressed with what you got. Remember that. Who are you trying to get the perfection for? All my 
silly faces while I do this? Probably. You know, this isn't hard. It's just you gotta take your time. A little attention to detail. Goes a long way. Time to be gentle. shine to it at least. Still has some real hair lines in it. But... Speed was good. Oh, here. Did high speed do it? Yep. High speed did it. Sometimes you just got to get a little aggressive in the, in the last second. And I think what I need. Big, you big dummy. Go to that side. <laughs> Well, actually, those scratches are probably from the big bezel that we painted yesterday touching it. Because they came out from puffing, polishing on this side, so. I think we're good. I think we're good enough. I think, well, wow. <laughs> there I go, trying to be a perfectionist. To do that off screen since I said don't do it. <laughs> Fails, flops, successes, whatever. I don't care, I'll show it all. One thing you get to know me, I don't hide the embarrassing stuff. Otherwise, how are you supposed to get to know me? The embarrassing stuff and the dumb stuff we do and the mistakes we make that make us who we are. There's a lot of stuff in my life I wish wouldn't have happened to me, but I wouldn't change it for the world because it's made me who I am. I do a lot of why me, just like the rest of everybody in the world. Why me when something happens? Why me? A couple years down the road, you're like, you know what? If that would have never happened to me, I'd never be sitting where I am today because I learned something from it that changed my path. And put me in a better one. So, or avoided a worse one. Persistence. 
Perfection? No. Really stinking good? Yeah. Good enough for the girls I date. quickie on the back of this. I don't know if I should. Catch, catch one of these. I'll just be open a can of worms. I think we're done. I think that's done. Get back behind there. No, I'm nuts. I'm going to clean that black up a little better. Big improvement. Perfection. New. Much gooder. Much gooder. Let me take a little scratch there from sitting against the glass. And now there's not. That'll be all hidden. And so just clean up the inside edge that you do see. Break it. Well, that's a quick video of the done finished product. Polished, clean, painted. And that's what it looks like when it's done. Only thing I need to Need to buy a new one of those or need to figure it out that was so dry rotted and brittle every time i touched it something broke off it and i glued it back together and it something else broke and then i had it where i thought it was good and i put it in the truck and the first time i shifted it it went whoop and then just fell apart to that what you see there so oh it's always something but lenses are nice like new Needles are painted, brighter to easier to see. Still got this little scratch here that I may take one more shot at now that it's all together. But she's ready to basically ready to go back in. I'm gonna. Um, I I did a test fit. I put all new LEDs in the back, and uh, <laughs> the first time I turned it on, I couldn't even tell they were on. And then I waited for nighttime, and I turned them on at night, and I could barely tell they were on. I mean, they are so dim; it's not even funny. Never had an LED bulb that's that damn dim. Well, looked up, didn't think about it. It's uh, 80 lumens. You'd think that'd be enough. Well, all of my views in the past were over 200, so I bought a pack of 200 lumens. We're going to swap those out right now and put this back in the truck, and I'll take a video of it when it's done. Um, maybe tonight, if when it gets dark, if I'm still here, I'll take a video of it lit up and all the LED lights on the truck lit up. So... All right, just a little update for you guys. We're getting there. One step closer.